Good morning. I'm Pastor Bonnie, and I'm blessed to be with you as we worship online, celebrating Baptism of the Lord Sunday. Why don't you take a moment to post a greeting in the comments and let us know who is worshiping with you today. May God bless us with a message of hope and love as we worship together. Let's join together in the greeting. The voice of the Holy One flashes forth, filling the world with awe and delight. The God of light sits enthroned in holy splendor. The voice of the Holy One cries out, bathing the world in goodness and hope. The God of glory thunders, full of majesty. The voice of the Holy One calls to us from the waters, pouring out love in an endless stream. Let us worship the God who calls us and lift up our voices in songs of praise. The words will be on your screen. When Jesus came to Jordan to be baptized by John, did not come for pardon, but as the sinless one. He came to share repentance with all who mourn their sins, to speak the vital sentence with which good news begins. He came to share temptation, our utmost woe and loss, 
us and our salvation to die upon the cross. So when the dove descended on him, the Son of Man, the hidden years had ended, the age of grace began. Come Holy Spirit, aid us to keep the vows we make. This very day invade us and every bondage break. Come give our lives direction, the gift we covet most. To share the resurrection that leads to Pentecost. Let us join together in prayer. Holy Maker of all that is and ever will be, in the beginning you breathed over primal waters, speaking light out of darkness, separating evening from morning, creating the first night and the first day. When Jesus rose from the waters of his baptism, you spoke again, calling him your holy child as the Holy Spirit descended upon him like a dove. When Paul baptized the new believers at Corinth, your Holy Spirit came upon them, pouring out words of prophecy and story. In this day of celebration and memory, fill us with your word and bathe us in your spirit that we may know ourselves as beloved children, ready to give of ourselves for the sake of the world. Amen. It's time for our children's moment. If you have kids worshiping with you, this is a special message just for them, so I invite you to bring them closer to the screen. Good morning, everybody. You know, I pray for each of you that God is blessing you in all that you do each day. I have a special book that I want to share with you. I recorded it so that you can see the pictures really clearly. Let's take a look. Today is Baptism Day by Anna V. Ostenso Moore, illustrated by Peter Krugel. Today is a day of hope. Hope in God's call to each of us as beloved children. Today is a day of unity, unity in one God, one faith, one baptism. Today is a day of love, the love of your parents sharing the love of God with you. Today is a day of community, a community that will worship and wonder with you a community that will nudge you toward God. Today is a day when we say, I will, with God's help. I will learn, eat, and pray with others. I will turn back to God when I've turned away. I will share my stories and our Christian stories in what I do and say. I will look for and name the holy in everyone I meet. I will respect every living being. I will do all this with God's help. Today is a day of sacred stories. Sacred stories that connect us to our Jewish relatives, to the people in our Bible, to all the followers of Jesus yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Today is a day of water, water that gives and sustains life, water that binds us to Jesus' life, death, resurrection, and ascension. Water that you can feel, 
to taste, a sign of an inward grace, water that washes over you in baptism. Today is a day of oil and light, oil called chrism, to bind you to the Holy Spirit. Jesus is light to remind us that God is with us. God is here. Today is a baptism day, a day forever after. Amen. I like that book so much. I wonder what you liked the most. I wonder if you liked all the different people and families. Did you see a family that looked like yours? I did. I also really like the idea that we are all part of God's family. Baptism is special because it's God's gift to us, letting us know how much God cares for us. So much so that God brings us into God's holy family and gives us each a special invitation to care for each other as God cares for us. And that's pretty great. Let's join in a prayer together today. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for Jesus, your beloved son. Thank you for the love of our church family. Bless us each day so that we can care for each other as you care for us. Amen. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the join together in the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you speak to us today. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 4 through 11. Hear these words. And so John, the Baptist, appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the River Jordan. John wore clothing made of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On Wednesday, I was working on my sermon, thinking about how we celebrate Jesus' baptism and remember our own as a blessing from God, a calling to live in community, and an invitation to share God's mission in the world. And then I got a text message from a clergy friend. Check the news, it said. So I switched to a new tab and Googled breaking news. I was glued to my screen for the next several hours, watching the live feeds of video showing people walking through the halls of the Capitol building, carrying office furniture and posing for pictures in front of broken windows, climbing on statues, and so much more. I watched an, a woman wipe her nose 
with an American flag. And a poem came to my mind by Anne Weems. It's called Witness. It goes like this. I am a Christian, one once said to me. He said it loudly. I watched and said, I shall not be. I was heartbroken to see people huddled down on the floor between the gallery seats of the legislature, scared for their lives, waiting for armed protesters to break through and open fire. I was reminded of the lockdown drills that school children participate in when they hide along the walls, crouching as tightly as they can along the same wall as the door, so that when a gunman looks through the small glass, they aren't visible. And I thought, I wonder what they'll do about gun control now that they've experienced the fear children face. Like so many of you, the day was completely unproductive. Nothing got done. We were also distracted by the events and by our future, thinking, what could be next? I also was remembering friends in Montreal who lived through an insurrection in the 1970s. I remembered their stories of tanks rolling down the streets of beautiful bedroom communities, those communities with stately homes and lush flower beds. Those are scenes they will never forget. And I was imagining those scenes in Washington while at the same time I was wondering how in the world I would get my kids together, even though they're spread out in different states, so that we could be together if things go crazy. I know that I was overreacting, but your mind goes to the extreme worst case scenario, doesn't it, in times of chaos? And I honestly was heartsick, truly heartsick because I know that some of those protesters claim that their actions are God-inspired, God-ordained, God-empowered. And I remembered that poem, I am a Christian, I shall not be. I thought about this sermon and every sermon that I hope to preach. I remind myself, preach the gospel, preach the good news. And on Wednesday, the good news of Jesus Christ, God's beloved Son, God incarnate, love in flesh, sounded cliche. I couldn't imagine standing here with you this morning saying, love your neighbor, when clearly so many Christians don't. Clearly Jesus' message of love is lost. Drowned out by what? Entitlement? Greed? Power? Pride? I was pretty broken, as I know many of you were. And then, praise God, God showed up disguised as Bruce. When Mark and I moved to Texas in 2006, we bought a house that didn't have a refrigerator. And it was Labor Day weekend and everything was sold out because of those big Labor Day sales. So we ordered a fridge and waited for it to come. Now we've had this fridge for 16 years, 14 years, since 2006. And we've moved it from home to home to home, three different homes. And so finally it kicked the bucket, it died. We called a repair company and the estimate to get things cooling again was over $400. So I turned to the Facebook marketplace posting free refrigerator not working. And that's how I came to meet Bruce. Just like God, he came to fix the broken. <laughs> Bruce showed up that same afternoon and after a bit of effort, to remove the door so it could fit through our entryway, we were hoisting it up onto his trailer. What are you planning to do with this, I asked. And Bruce laughed a bit to himself and started telling me about the teenage boys who live across the street. They must have noticed him tinkering one day in his garage and they came over curious. 
They've started tinkering right alongside him, learning from him, and he said teaching them a thing or two. And now Bruce watches out for free broken down appliances. He picks them up and hauls them back to his garage. And then he and the boys get to work, taking them apart, testing things out, tinkering to figure out how to fix whatever ails them. They order the needed parts and they put them back together and then they sell them. Bruce recoups the cost of the parts and the boys keep the rest. It's a great little business. But what brought me back to my senses as he was telling me this on Wednesday, what restored my hope in this crazy world was the delight that was shining in Bruce's eyes as he told me about these boys. He is so proud of them and the work that they are doing together. His eyes just lit up when he remarked, they can figure out things, they're so bright. And it was apparent to me that these boys have brought a great sense of joy to Bruce. It might be a pain to pick up fridges and washing machines and the boys don't ever come to help load them, but it's worth it to spend that time teaching, working together, and mentoring these kids. God has blessed Bruce with gifts, an insight into appliance repair, and patience to share his knowledge with teenagers. And Bruce knows it. He knows that he is serving God and sharing God's love as he fixes stuff with these boys. Now all I could think of when I was talking to him was the word delight. Bruce delights in his time and efforts spent working with these kids. In our scripture today, we hear God's voice from heaven say to Jesus, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. Now that's the NRSV version, the scholarly translation. But hear what the Living Bible translation says. It says, You are my beloved son, you are my delight. God delights in God's Son, Jesus, and in God's creation, in humanity. And we, in turn, are invited and incorporated into the family of God through baptism. We turn from sin and hatred to love and delight. God delights in us, and we can delight in one another, even rowdy, curious teenagers from across the street. God, disguised as Bruce, reminded me that though brokenness and sin still exists in the world, as we saw it on Wednesday, Jesus has conquered it. Jesus is victorious and we have no reason to lose hope. Instead, we are encouraged and empowered to love where we live, to reach out and make a difference in the lives of his neighbor, and that's not cliche. Yes, what happened in our nation's capital is horrible, and what's happening all around us is hard. And we ought to be appalled and even outraged. Maybe even more appropriately, we grieve these events. But today, as we remember Jesus' baptism and our own baptism, we remember our calling to love as Jesus, to serve like Jesus, and to live like Jesus. We can be encouraged to do what we can in our corner of the world. Margaret J. Wheatley in her book, Who Do We Choose to Be, writes of how we can't solve the world's problems on a global scale, not even on a national scale. All we can do is work to create islands of sanity where good work still gets done and where people enjoy healthy relationship in the midst of chaos. Bruce is contributing to an island of sanity in his neighborhood. Perhaps island of sanity is another way of describing kingdom of God. Perhaps we should remember our call to follow Jesus as a call to create islands of peace, islands of love, islands of grace. I hope you've seen in the epistle this week we included a prayer it's from a United Methodist Church called Church of the Resurrection, and they have these prayers available in their bookstore as shower tags, 
plastic waterproof tags with a loop on it so you can hang it from your shower. And it reads, Lord, as I enter the water to bathe, I remember my baptism. Wash me by your grace. Fill me with your spirit. Renew my soul. I pray that I might live as your child today and honor you in all that I do. I encourage you to copy that prayer from the epistle and then do the same. Be reminded each day of who you are, whose you are, and what God has called you to do as a follower of Jesus Christ. Each day, remember your baptism and face the day with courage to live your commitment to God and God's mission in the world revealed through Jesus Christ, to resist evil, injustice, and oppression. Jesus himself opposed violence, even when he was being arrested on the eve of his crucifixion, stepping in to prevent bloodshed, saying, no more of this, as he touched the ear of the man who one of his disciples had attacked, and he healed him. Jesus stood to protect a woman as she was being attacked by men who would condemn her, but not the man who was exploiting her. And in doing so, he turned definitions of power and sin upside down. Jesus, the one whom we follow, did come to change political systems, but not through violence. He's not about cutting down or cutting off, but about healing and restoring. He has come to reconcile the world to God. And so we speak out against violence and oppression, doing all we can to carry on Jesus' healing work. Here at St. Luke, we affirm that mission in these words. We are a community of faith, working for God's peace, hope, love, and justice in the world. Through God's grace, we have been invited to follow in Jesus' footsteps, delighting in God's creation and all people to bring about God's kingdom here on earth, perhaps creating islands of love, islands of grace, as well as islands of sanity. Through God's Holy Spirit, we are being transformed into new life, into new people who bring about God's kingdom each day through small acts of love. Even if it's something like tinkering in a garage. You know, as I watched those folks at the Capitol on Wednesday, honestly, I was ashamed. I was ashamed to call myself a Christian. It was horrible to think that someone might equate my faith, our faith, the church, with those events. And then I met Bruce. Unlike the person in Anne Williams' poem, he didn't tell me he was a Christian. He lived it out in front of me. And I watched and I said, I shall be one too. And let all God's people say, Amen. Family of Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth by water and the Spirit. All of this is God's gift, offered to us without price. Through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, say, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, 
which Christ has opened to people of all ages, all nations, and all races. If so, say, I do. According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? If so, say, I will. Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments, saying together, I believe in God, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of God, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. In the fullness of time you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit and by this gift of water call to our remembrance the grace declared to us in our baptism. For you have washed away our sins, and you clothe us with righteousness throughout our lives, that dying and rising with Christ, we may share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Friends, remember your baptism and be thankful. The Holy Spirit work within you that having been born of the water and spirit, you may live as faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, we rejoice together in the faithfulness of our covenant God. We give thanks for all that God has given us as members of the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we will faithfully participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, the God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit that you may live in grace and peace. Amen. Let us share signs of peace with one another wherever you are, saying peace be with you. We come together as people of faith and we pray for one another. And so friends, let us join together in prayer. Holy God, Christ's beloved parent, Grace is the gift which flows to us from your heart. Joy is the seed planted deep within our souls that it might blossom into lives of service to all people. And so we cry glory, praise be to God. 
servant of sinners, you emerge from baptism's water to embrace us in your hopes. You take our fears from us and you toss them aside as you lead us into your kingdom. You shine the light which brings us out of darkness and despair's shadows. And so we cry, glory, praise be to God. Wind upon the water, you move among us. You sweep aside our petty pride and you offer us the gifts of humility and servanthood. You whisper of your yearning for peace and reconciliation until it silences our angry voices and unclenches our fisted hearts. And we cry, glory, praise be to God. God in community, holy in one, we lift our voices as your beloved teaches us praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, let us join together in our hymn of prayer. The words will be on your screen. My heart is beating faster in my chest As I sing of where my loyalties will rest To never wait on the government to move As the broken and the poor cry out for you For the kingdom and the king for His glory we will sing For the rescue of our souls He has come For the kingdom and the cross Oh, the triumph and the loss Love has broken through and now redeemed For the kingdom and the King Oh God, may we be focused on the least A people balancing the fasting and the feast A call to give and to serve and celebrate For you are great, oh my God, you are great For the kingdom and the king for His glory we will sing For the rescue of our souls He has come For the kingdom and the cross Oh, the triumph and the loss Love has broken through and now redeemed And our home is not in this land Not in these things And we rest Oh, knowing your love Has called us to move Called us to sing Sing, sing 
and the people will sing. They will sing, sing. Oh, the people will sing for the King, for the King, for the kingdom and the King. For His glory we will sing. For the rescue of our souls, He has come. For the kingdom and the cross, oh, the triumph and the loss. Love has broken through and now redeemed. For the kingdom and the King. Friends, as we consider our offering in these uncertain times, let us be encouraged. The church is a place of love and support, of sharing and holding up. Our financial gifts empower the ministries of St. Luke to faithfully work for God's peace, hope, love, and justice in the world. And so let us join together as we pray. Holy Beloved One, source and end of all love, we return these gifts to you. Make them be a light for the world. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here. Praise God, all love ye heavenly host, Creator Christ and Holy Ghost. Amen. Friends, we have a number of opportunities to connect online during the pandemic, but we are also interested in making sure that we are meeting the needs of our community. If you have ideas or specific needs that we can meet, would you please reach out to us? You can contact us at office at stlukeaustin.com. We would love to hear from you. Let us join together as we sing our closing hymn. The words will be on your screen. Lord of all creation Of water, earth, and sky The heavens are your tabernacle Glory to the Lord on high The God of wonders beyond our galaxy you are holy, holy. The universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy. Lord of heaven and earth. Lord Celebrate the light and when I stumble in the darkness, I will call your name by night. The light of wonders beyond our galaxy, you are holy. Holy, the universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy, Lord of heaven and earth, 
Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. God of wonders beyond our galaxy, you are holy, holy. The universe declares your majesty, you are holy, holy. The precious Lord. Reveal your heart to me, Father Holy, Holy. Hear this blessing. Go into the world as light of Christ, pouring out love like a living stream. May the God who is love bless you and make you a blessing to a world yearning to know how to love. Amen. We join together and we sing our hymn of sending, The Irish Blessing. Go in peace, everyone. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm 